Take it away, Megan. Hello, I am so excited to be here tonight to talk to you all about scheduling a doctor's appointment. Now, I know you're probably wondering, who is this person and why is she talking to me about this? Well, I'll tell you. I have a long history of scheduling doctor's appointments. And although I do not have a family of my own that I schedule them for, I do have a cat. And here's the secret. Scheduling for the vet is very similar to scheduling for the doctor. So, this process will involve the receptionist, you, and maybe the doctor. Now, for the other audience members, I've gone ahead and made you just a little more attractive. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Um, so everyone's going to have to do that at some point or another. It doesn't matter if you're some kind of hooligan or an intellectual or a hipster douchebag. <laughs> <You're... laughs> Usually it's for some sort of medical ailment. Perhaps you have the gout or pregnancy or crabs or some sort of skin disease. You know, and there, there are other reasons you might go to the doctor, like maybe you're having an affair or you're faking a medical condition. I'm not one to judge. But I do know that once you decide, it's, uh, once you decide, you, it's really important that you choose the correct doctor. Because I don't know about you, but in my past experience, the eye doctor is not super helpful when it comes to dealing with those hemorrhoids. <laughs> so, <laughs> once you pick out your doctor, here's what you do. You call the office, and you're going to set up a time with the receptionist that you and the doctor are both available. Now, some offices will allow you to do this all online, but I highly recommend that you call because Lord knows there are predators out there who would just love to get their hands on your pap smear results. <laughs> so just be safe. Now you may encounter some problems, some barriers if you will. Uh, perhaps your schedule is really full or your phone is broken or the doctor's office hours are a problem. Any number of things could happen. For all I know, you could be under attack by wombats. <laughs> but far, far and away, far and away, the most common problem is the doctor's office hours. Because they have you call them between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., which as you know, most of us are working during that time. And if you're like me, you work in a cubicle. I've been there since my f promotion after my great work on the Y2K project. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're sitting in a cubicle, it can feel a lot like you're in your own little space. You know, you've got your pictures up on the wall and your little tchotchkes about, and you feel safe. But you know, the the words, they go right through the walls. Smells even go right through those walls. <laughs> so you don't want to be gross. So you know, just my recommendation is you, you take, <laughs> take your cell phone on a walk, go out to your car and do it from there. Just be courteous to your other coworkers. That's important. Uh, there, there might be a few things that you could talk about, like if you had a broken bone or something else really visible, like rabies, but <laughs> you probably shouldn't be at the office in that case, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just play it safe. Uh, as we all know, uh, um, metrics are very important to the bottom line, and so I'm going to tell you how to know if you've been successful. Here's what you look for the receptionist will repeat back to you the date and time that you agreed on. That's how you know you've done a good job. Now, things to look out for. If they say things that are really vague, like, okay, we'll talk to you later, or come in sometime, see you around. 
that means you probably did not complete the transaction and you're going to want to go back and start again. So I hope this information has been really useful for you. You can take... You can take my word on this. I operate at about a 90% success rate. And I don't want to brag, but nine times out of 10, I'm getting it right.